hello. So if I turn this off so that no one phones me, you should be able to hear me, I hope. The only thing is, I've got to figure out to share this onto the other page. The other page. Shump dum dum. Dum dum dum. Share onto a group. That's it. Done. Ray. And share onto a page. Oh, why is that doing that? Shares onto page. No. Right. So if I get rid of the other one, get rid of it. I'm not even sure why I'm on it. Hello, Carol. How's it going? I'm cool. Well, I've got two fake. Well, I haven't got two fake. Um, I've got the afterbirth, not the afterbirth, the aftermath of um, having a, a wisdom tooth extracted. And so the pain is half what it was, but I've got the pain of how, basically my mouth is like a building site. It, well, there's no scaffolding or anything, but it's... Cause I've been digging into it and there's a lot of mouth trauma, gum trauma. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to be, it's going to, over the next day or two, it should be back to normal, I hope. Uh, Jules Lucielle Jenny says, hi, hi, hi. Um... Oh, excuse me, a bit of gas, that was nice. So I'm sharing this on my Facebook page. I'm also sharing it on the, um, what's it page, the boring group. So I don't know. By the way, if you want, if you're interested, wax, lovely. If you want to, you can join my Facebook group, Jason Newland's Boring Group. And uh, just go to the group, basically, and just ask to join. Molly is the boss, and she will study your profile and do, you know, security checks. Um, you know, you have to go through a whole... Um, process it's about a six or seven months process and, <laughs> and um, there's the, the charge is a thousand pounds to start with and then it's it's only six hundred dollars a month after that but yeah then you can join I had four people listening now I've only got two I was only kidding did you have a general no I didn't have a general I had uh, just they injected me about five times. Uh, apparently, the the wisdom tooth is one of the hardest ones to remove. That's what they told me, and I could even feel it in my in my throat, in my neck. It's kind of really uh, a lot of uh, makes you woozy a few days after. Yeah, I just I can feel where they injected it into my gum into like the side of my mouth and yeah it's all right it's just it's better than what it was because the toothache was proper oh oh proper I didn't enjoy it I mean no one enjoys toothache but it was just oh Not in a good way. So, uh, other than that, really, I haven't. Uh, Carol says, how's it going? Hi, Carol. Oh, no. Let's go back to front on the screen. Okay. So, who else is listening? So, we've got Carol and Jules. Who else? Five people. Hey. This isn't going to be a long recording. I know I normally say that, and it usually ends up being about ten days long. But... 
um, I'm still a bit, I've been taking quite a bit, um, sensibly, but I've been taking painkillers uh, every four hours. And they're not strong, strong, but they're, they're enough to generally make it okay. The problem is, I've got a broken toe at the moment. So when this reduces, my toe starts throbbing. <laughs> it's, it's like, and then if the toe stops throbbing, my lower back throbs because I've got arthritis in my lower back because I'm actually really, really elderly now. Um, I'm aging as we speak. As you can see, uh, I did post a picture of myself the, uh, yesterday, was it? The day before, me and Vinny. Um, and someone put, oh, I, it's good to be able to put a face to the, to the voice. And I thought, oh, uh, Jill says, my mum swears by cinnamon tea. Cinnamon tea. I can see that. Because the cinnamon is, it's kind of got um, that spice. It's kind of got an anaesthetic -y thing, isn't it? It's uh, what I'm thinking of. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh. What's, is it clovers? Remember clovers that people put in apple apple pie? I know I'm really showing my age here because I don't, people, don't know if people do it anymore. But when I was a kid, my stepmom used to put clovers in apple pies to make it, to give it like an extra taste. But then sometimes we'd end up getting it and it would be like, not we'd choke on it, but now make her laugh. <laughs> no, it, but we'd, it'd be like, that'd be lucky. Oh, it's lucky. But that clover, I remember when the adults had two fake, and maybe they did it with us, is you put the clover on it and it kind of it's very anesthetic y yeah see <sighs> I wouldn't even know where to get a clover from I know it's four leaf clover are supposed to be good good um, luck but that's a different kind of clover isn't it because they're like little leaves these clovers were twigs like a little, I'm sure if you like broke it or something, it's supposed to be good luck or um, less chance of choking. I don't know. One of them. One of them. Oh. Vinny's on the floor chewing one of his bones. He's got a choice of about six down there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Ow, my toe. So yeah, so my big toe's hurting as well. And let me just look at the one, the one I'm not seeing is uh, anyone on the, mind you, if anyone says anything, I'm gonna put a high on the group and see whether or not it comes up on, am I? What the hell happened there? Oh, anyway. Um, Yes, yeah, so you can go, you can get clove oil at the chemist. Someone did tell me that you can get Vicky. Hi, Vicky. You can get toothing gel that little babies have, and that helps. I mean, I haven't got a toothache. This is a tooth not there anymore, but it's. Although the tooth that is left that was next to it. It's very sensitive, but I think that might have just been because all the pressure was put on it. Perhaps, <laughs> I hope, because I can't afford another £250 to have another tooth out. As it is, I had to borrow the money to start with. It's for that one. Oh. You know, I got there, right? I originally got an appointment, so I phoned them up on a Wednesday. No, Thursday. The dentist couldn't find the NHS dentist anywhere. I called one one one, and they said, "Well, we can't guarantee that anyone will see you. They're supposed to see you as an emergency, but can't guarantee it's NHS." Okay. Uh, 
okay, well, uh, Jules, why are you saying sorry to my guns? And so I just phoned around uh, because Thursday night, I was up all night in just too much. It was just a bit too much, to be honest. And I kind of run out of ideas. So Friday morning, I phoned up first thing, the two, the, the, the one of the ones that the 111 NHS line gave me to phone and I did and uh, it was the same one that I'd already made an appointment with for Saturday and I said look it's worse can you please get me in as an appointment as an emergency and they said well we can fit you in at 10 no 11 11 o'clock so I got there had to get a taxi because the buses weren't running well there was no buses at that time so I had to get a, a thing um, uh, there's a lot of people in there and I went in there anyway I got seen they put a, the worst part of it well not the worst part but the hard part was the x-ray because they put this thing is like twice the size of my mouth and I had to put it in my mouth and like trying to hold down on it and I was gagging and like, oh, this wasn't nice because I can't open my mouth very wide. Um, usually. Very uncomfortable. But then they showed me on the thing where it was like, it's basically the tooth was decayed all the way into the gums, basically. It was un... un they said they possibly could treat it with... Uh, what do they call it? You know when they cut your gums open and stuff? I said, nah, you're right. And he laughed. I said, no. Because, you know, no. No thanks. I mean, if... If it was a case of saving all of my teeth, and the only way they could do it is by me having an operation and stuff, I'd, I'd have to consider it, because I don't want to lose all my teeth. But for the sake of one tooth... I wasn't going to get too, not too attached to it. I'm going to miss it. You know, birthdays, Christmas, but generally it's uh, not that bothered. And then I, so I had the x-ray, he said, okay, we need to do an extraction. I said, yeah, I know. That's why I'm here. I told you that. Oh, well, we have to check. Why? It's aching, take it out. That's what I've come in for. Um, there's no way, well, okay, I'm not an expert, but it's very unlikely I'd have been in that much pain if all it needed was a filling. I've had two fake before I had a filling. Have to go, okay, Jules has to go, bye. I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> um. You know, I said to me next, said, okay, we'll have to book you in for an appointment. I said, no, this is the appointment. I, I've come here. This is an emergency appointment. It wasn't to just have a chat and have an x-ray. I need the treatment. It's, it's like, oh, but yeah, we, we, there's not enough time. Diana says, I'm petrified of dentist. Yeah, they've got a bad rap. To be fair, to be fair, um, I've had quite a good, I say good, but you know, it's been all right. My experience with dentists, they've always been really nice. And that's my main thing is if they're nice and they know what they're doing, but they're nice, you know, and these, my last two dentists have been really nice to me. I like that. Very friendly. Put me at ease. After the extra, everything else was a little bit easier, kind of. Although, I was getting a little bit anxious, if I'm honest with you. But I managed to calm that down. But I had... Um, I said to look, if you don't take it out, I'm going to have to pull it out with pliers. I can't handle this anymore. This is too much. 
I said, I, I know how to control pain and everything like that. Much easier with someone else than with myself. But for some reason, this is not, this is just a little bit too much for me. And, uh, and I guess my anxiety was making it worse, you know, like it would. And they said, no, we, we can't, we've got too many people. If someone cancels, maybe we can see you and take it out. I said, but I can't, I can't. I'll wait in your, you, I'll wait in here all day. I'll wait in, in your um, uh, waiting room. Yeah, I'll wait in your, I couldn't think of the word. Wait, I'll wait in your um, oh, waiting room. This guy says, I hate dentists too. Yeah, I've definitely, I've definitely found a topic we can all agree with here. We can all agree on dentists. Ooh, ooh! I'd, I don't dislike the dentists themselves. I just the whole. I don't like things in my mouth. Generally, I don't. I mean, I like food, and I definitely like chocolate, which is obvious because of having to have dental work. Chocolate's definitely been. Um, they've been. That's been very friends with chocolate. Especially Capri Scream eggs, because the last few weeks I've been eating too many of them, and that's, I think, uh, the price I pay. But, days, days like, I said, look, I need it done, I'll wait all day if I have to. I can't come back on Tuesday or Wednesday. They said, we can make an appointment for Wednesday. And this was on Friday. Like, no, I can't, I can't. This is just too much. And they said, okay, wait a minute. He went out of the room, was gone for about five minutes, came back. And he said, oh, uh, my colleague will do it. So I went next door and he did it. And he was just as nice as the other bloke that I just saw. Uh, Rachel says, uh, hi, Jason. Hi, Rachel. Been a, been a while. Been a minute since I last spoke to you. Hope you're well. Um, been a minute, that's what they say in American dramas. Oh, the headache. So this isn't going to be a long one because I'm a little bit under the weather, a little bit. Um, so I, they gave me a lot of anaesthetic, a lot of injections, trying to kind of get it numb. I think it's because they need you to get it numb quick. Because I've been to dentists in the past where they've just done a filling or something and they give me an injection and then I've weighed in the waiting room for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But because they were, they were in a hurry, they would give me lots of injections to get it as numb as quick as possible. So it was probably a little bit more. Uh, Rachel says, I'm okay, thanks, cool. Um, and it was a little bit, bit much, bit too quick, bit too much, I think. But anyway, they got it out in the end. It took a lot of uh, work to get it out. Because it wasn't wobbly, it wasn't loose, or any other words that mean the same thing. Uh, Vicky says, if the dentist had just pulled it out without all the talking, it would have been quicker. Yeah, I agree, it would have just, but I, I, I don't know why. Reggie says, you had a tooth out. Yep, I did. Uh, my wisdom tooth. Just there. Yeah. Just do. And personally, I think the gum hurts more, like the side of my mouth hurts more than the actual where the wisdom tooth was because of the way they were injecting. They were injecting in that area. And it's just, uh, I've even got a weird taste still from the anesthetic. But uh, that'll be all right. Hope you feel better soon. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so it's just... I haven't really... Uh, so there's been a few things going on since... The last couple of months. I mean, um, this isn't a Let Me Boy to Sleep, so this is it's not going to be a podcast. But uh, for those that are aware, my friend died at the end of November... So December, January, kind of being quite full on with dealing with that. 
uh, funeral and all that stuff. Um, I broke my toe two weeks ago. I kicked the wall. Can you believe it? I, was, I did, but not, but not on purpose. I was having a dream and I was being chased by something. I think it was an animal. And I thought, I think it was an animal, I don't know. But anyway, I was being chased and I turned around and I thought, the velocity of them coming towards me and then me kicking with all my might is going to damage them more than it damages me. Because, because of them, you know, the speed of them coming towards me and everything. So that's what I did. But instead of kicking them in the face, which is what I did in my dream, I kicked the wall. And I woke up. And there was a dent in the wall from where I kicked the, from my nail. And my, my, <laughs> my toe was completely, oh, very, very broke. So it's, it's still red and everything, but it was pretty much black. Part of it was black for a while. And that's just over two weeks, maybe two and a half weeks ago. Um, maybe three weeks, blimey. It goes so quick, doesn't it? And uh, allow this. There's kind of a few things. They've got a thread. Oh, my goodness. I've got thread that's going through some stuff, like some pretty serious stuff at the moment. So that's been heavy. Um, but... Yeah, I'm hoping to get back to a degree of normality now. Hope to get back to making the Let Me Boy to Sleep recordings again. Um, as soon as this thing is feeling better, I reckon I've got maybe another day or two and it should be fine. I'm hoping I'll wake up tomorrow and it's just a lot less and then tuesday even less 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 and then wednesday thursday whatever you know after a week it's completely back to normal because it was also like i had my mouth wide open and it was stretched my neck in a way that it doesn't normally get stretched um thanks rachel um so it was putting a lot of pressure on the muscles of my neck like i had my mouth wide open um Vicky says, how's Vinny without Logie? Um, he's all right. He was a bit weird for the first week or so. He wasn't eating his food. Not like properly, you know, because while Logie was here, I'd give Vinny his food. He'd eat it straight away so that Logie couldn't get to it. But now, uh, after a week or so of being really keeping away from me, uh, there was times when he was sitting, he was just like, was no one, didn't want to be near me. He'd be sitting near the, near the window in the bedroom, which is unusual for him. Um, after that, he got back to normal and now he's eating food and everything's fine. Uh, Rachel said, I thought you'd move to Thailand. No. Nope. I visited, but I've not moved. I'm still in England. England. The new land is in England. Um, yeah, Vinny's all right now. And Logie's happy. He's got a message from his new mummy. And he's very happy. He's got a big house, a big garden, his own bed if he wants it. Um, he's, yeah, he's doing really well. Um, and he's with someone that he knows really well as well. Because she is a... a a close friend of um, my friends, so he knew he knew that he already knew her, and he's happy. So that's all we can really hope for. I think is that he's he's happy. That's all anyone can hope for, isn't it? Really, Vinny's he's got Vinny was before they moved together, before they lived together, they got on really really well. Once they lived together for two months. That um, that excitement of being together had gone. They really weren't interested in each other at all. It's strange. And they got on. They had a couple of arguments, which was a bit scary. Uh, if they weren't near each other's stuff, and Vinny was the worst out of the two of them. He'd, he'd snap and growl and everything, and he never used to do that before. 
when Logie came upstairs, Logie could do anything he wanted and Vinny would just let him. As soon as he moved in and he was living here all the time, Logie had to put his foot down like, no, that's mine. You're just a visitor. You don't really live here. He's my dad, not yours. Even though he keeps telling me I'm not his real dad. So, what some of the weird things is he's become more, um, he became more affectionate towards me though, Vinny did. Because Logie's very affectionate. He likes to just lay on me, cuddle. He'd do that all day long if he could. He loves cuddling. Vinny's not really a cuddler. But if he saw Logie trying to cuddle me, he'd try and get in the middle. Because he didn't like it. He didn't like me giving attention to someone else. So that's quite nice that he's to find out that he does... He's got... Um, I don't know, feelings for me, I guess. I don't know what they are. <laughs> I really don't know, because he's a strange little monkey. But he seems to care. And it'll be two years at the end of this month. Two years two years old. I've had him since he was ten months. So, uh, what is that? One, two, three. One year and three months I'll have had him. And he still ignores everything I tell him to do and I don't tell him to do much at all just slowly when we walk in and to go slowly when we're crossing the road and not to go in the road he tries to run in the road all the time even though he's on the lead that's the only rule the only real rule I have for him is to not run in the road and he still hasn't taken it in after all this time and the weird thing is, he's making some weird noises. My friend, um, my friend's really going for it. A, a cat got run over last week. And like, and that's one of my worries about him, like that he's just gonna run off in the road. And sometimes, even though he's on the lead, if I'm distracted by someone else, someone's like speaking to me or I'm holding some rubbish or something like that he'll just run he'll dart off and that just scares the hell out of me because the idea of losing him is too much even though I don't know I think um I think it'd be weird if I had a dog that or a pet or an animal or a, a son you know who was really over affectionate because I didn't have that with Andre and I didn't have it with Vinny. Andre, he, I gave him cuddles and stuff and he, he loved me. I loved that little boy, my little ferret Andre. But he was his own man, you know, he did his own thing. He wasn't, um, wasn't needy, didn't need my attention. And Vinny's kind of the same as well. Most of the time. Sometimes he really does need my attention. It's like me, 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 me. But a lot of the time he'll just do his own thing. He's happy to do that. And he wants my attention when he wants food. Or he wants a tree. Or he wants to go for a walk. Or, and I wish I hadn't said that out loud. Or whatever. But he definitely knows his own mind. He knows his own mind. He knows what he wants to do. And it's rarely the same thing as what I want to do. So, yeah. <sighs> what else? Is there anyone else on here? Uh, Vicky, Jules, really, really, yeah. Uh, Emma, yeah. I'm trying to think what else is happening. Not really anything else happening, to be honest. Um, yeah, nothing else happening, just... Um, waiting for this I mean it's subsided enough for me to be able to make a recording to make to make a video like this even though it's not like uh, a video of anything particular just me blabbering on you know but that's it I hope the, the sound is okay and the, the picture is probably not too bright, but 
Hey, um, the thing is, people will watch it anyway. People after I've done a recording, so I want to say hello to everyone. Diana, dogs. Diana says dogs are weirdly awesome pets. They are. They are. You know, I've I've lived in places. I've lived with a few dogs, uh, where the dogs were just living there, and I've moved in, and I'm the lodger, and the the landlord has got a dog, you know, or a cat or something like that. But I never really felt any kind of close closeness with any of the pets, apart from one cat, who took a shine to me. Um. And I really took this this cat. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I can't remember her name, but she. I moved into this this. It was my cousin's house, and she had about three four cats, and I don't know why, but this one cat really took to me like proper, proper. Vicky says the picture and sound is good. Thank you. Yay! Um, I'm getting excited. Um, oh yeah, this cat. And I was at quite a, a difficult moment in my life at that time. And I remember I was laying down on the bed on my front and the cat was walking up and down my back. And it was almost like the cat was healing me. Absolutely amazing. It was just, oh... And the purring, like, purr. it's like, oh, this is really nice. So, I do get cats to a degree. I'm not, I don't have a cat. I've never had really, I had a cat when I was little. There was like, a, we had a, a cat in the house. And unfortunately, they're called Tigger. But unfortunately, they got um, run over. This is when I was about, about eight years old. And after that, I've lived in one, two, probably two places that had cats. Because most of the places I lived in is has been renting a room. I've had a few places where the landlord or landlady is living in the place as well. But usually it's just been a room in a house that's multiple occupancy or whatever they call it. So it usually isn't pets. When I moved here, my friend Luke downstairs, the one that passed away recently, he had a ferret or it was a... Um, Get what he called it now, but it was a ferret. Uh, it was God, what's, the, what's the name of see, words have gone out of my head because I don't talk, it's good. I'm not talking so much to people, and I kind of my words are beginning to loop. See, um, Vinny, 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 Vinny. I wish you'd come up and let me hold him so you could see him. But if I go to pick him up, he'll hate it. He would run away from me. Seriously. At least with Andre, I could pick him up. Like, quickly grab him. And he'd let me pick him up. He didn't run away from me. But Finney always runs away. He never lets me pick him up. The only way I can get him is if he's on the lead. Or if I catch him off guard. And then he'll want to try and get down. So he does just doesn't, doesn't like being picked up. So I can't really argue with that, can I? It's not fair. To just pick him up for my own amusement. As far as dogs go, I've lived with. Do we had a dog when I was a kid? Uh, later on in life, later on in my childhood, when I was about. Um, Sebastian, hi Sebastian, uh, nice, hi. Um, it's had a uh, St. Bernard, yeah, St. Bernard, when I was about 14, roughly, and it was huge, way too big, it's just huge, huge, they need a country all to themselves, 
huge. Bigger than me then. Bigger than me now, to be honest. It was probably a good 17 stone, huge. Uh, Diana says Andre was super cute. Andre was super cute, I agree with you. He was so beautiful. That's why I chose him out of the two that I had. I had a choice of two different ones. Polecat, that's the word I was thinking of, Polecat. Um, Sebastian, hi Jason, hi. Um, yes, I just looked at his little face and his little, like a little mask on his eyes and cutest little thing I've ever seen in my life. And it's still one of the happiest moments of my life, even to this day, um, because he hated me when I first got him. He kept trying to, he kept biting me. Like, he really didn't like me at all. But I didn't give up, you know, I kept picking up her up anyway, even though he kept trying to bite me. I'd pick him up and, you know, I wouldn't leave him alone. And then one day, and this is after about two weeks, perhaps, I was sitting on a chair over there, watching, probably watching boxing. And I had my dressing gown on, and I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again, and I probably will tell it many, many times in the future. So I had my dressing gown on, and I was drinking a can of lager, back, then, that back in them days I used to drink. So the can of lager was on the right side of me, it was on a little table, and I had my arm resting there, and Logie, no, Vinny, Andre, blimey, Andre jumped up my leg, climbed all the way up, bearing in mind he was still like that big, tiny little thing, climbed up my sleeve of my dressing gown, my blue dressing gown, went to sleep. I didn't know what he was doing up there, and he just literally climbed in and just went to sleep. That was it. And I'll be totally true, this is. I was walking around all the time, like for the next two, three hours, walking around like that, trying to keep him like balanced in my sleeve, you know, like that, you know? Going to the toilet, going into the kitchen to get another beer. Um, I was playing table tennis, it was very difficult. But I managed <laughs> skydiving and I didn't want him to leave. I was so happy that he'd chosen to do that of his own volition. I didn't, you know, he chose to do that. So he went from hating me to whatever that was. I didn't know what it was. But from then onwards, we were tight, very close. And he never tried to bite me again, never attacked me. Uh, play fighted me, but he never, it's like, he just gave in. He said, okay, I suppose I'm stuck with you. And, you know, I think some people that don't know, what's up, Vinny? You're going to make some noises now. I tell you, I can grab him. If I take him to the door, the door's closed. If I walk over to the door, I can pick him up. Should I do that? Yeah? Okay, I'll do that. Then you're going to say hello to him. Right, wait a sec. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Oh. oh, no, that was a trick, wasn't it? Hey, look. I tricked him. Tricked him. Look, <laughs> he's tricked. He's not happy. It's not what he. <laughs> it's not what he wanted. He's hiccuping. Do you want to say hello? Oh, blimey, Vinny, it's all right. Hey, it's okay. You're safe. He doesn't want to. He doesn't like being picked up. If, it's, if he chooses to, it's different. If, if he climbs onto me, my voice is going now. If 
if he climbs on, <laughs> he's making some weird noises. If he climbs onto me, it's different. Like with a photograph I took the other day. Sebastian says, blimey mate, how relaxing. Hi Vinny, good dog. He is cute. Thanks Rachel. Um, or, says Diana, Di Diana, Diana, Diana. That's great with words. Right? Look, there he is, look. He's a good boy, he just, he, he doesn't, maybe he doesn't, oh hello. He's giving me kisses. He's giving me kisses. Oh. I'm trying to hold him like that. He's okay. He just doesn't want to be on camera. I think he's camera shy. Are you camera shy? Are you camera shy? Let's see if I can put this down a little bit so it's a little bit more. Yes. Yeah, okay, mate. Good boy. But yeah, that's it really. I just thought I'd say hi. And hey Vinny, says Diana. Say hello to Diana. Hello Diana. Hello. But yeah, that was one of the nicest moments. Andre climbing up my sleeve like that. It's weird because it was like November 2015. When you think about it, it's like, what, 30, that's eight, over eight years ago. Christine, oh, he's shy. He is Christine, he's very shy, look. He's a shy girl. Are you shy? Are you shy? Oh, oh. I'm not shy. I'm manly. <laughs> Are you manly? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh. Uh, Vicky says, love his ears, so cute. Yeah, one ear's floppy. Um, and he's he's got that thing. Just is. They do both stick up and they both go floppy at times. That's his general day-to-day -day thing. One sticks up and one's floppy. It's very cute. He's quite a nice colouring as well. He's, to me, I just feel he looks like a fox. I think that's what I think. He's very much kind of, um, Dinah says, what a sweetie. Sebastian's laughing at you. Ah, there's a little rabbit there. Go and get the rabbit. Um, yeah, he is cute. He's, I just think of him as Basil Brush. You know, Basil Brush. Like, <laughs> boom, boom. I just, look, he doesn't, he looks like Basil Brush to me. Maybe I'm wrong. So yeah, Fox, basically. You little Fox. He's Foxy. You want to say hello to everyone? I want to say hello to Molly. What do you want to say hello to Molly for? I love Molly, she's my girlfriend. Vinny? You can't say that. It's true. <laughs> Shush. Molly! Okay, is there anyone else you want to say hello to? Rebecca! Why? She's also my girlfriend. You can't. No, you can't have... And everyone can't be your girlfriend. You can't. Um, just says... Oh, he does, yeah. A man... He's... He's a... He's tan, mate. Original dashboard colour. Yeah. He is like a fox. How's the tooth? Boom, boom. Boy. How's my tooth? Boom. And my tooth is... They didn't give it to me. For all the money they took, they should have given me the, the tooth engraved in gold. The amount they charged. Christopher. So Christine's here. Hi, Christine. And Christopher, hello. He looks like my Barney, all be a different coat. Yeah, he's... He's, I saw a dog earlier, today or yesterday or sometime. Very, very, very similar coat. Different type of dog, but very similar coat. Um, I know you just said different coat, but... And it's almost like exactly the same. Same colour, same kind of texture. I can't believe he's still sitting there. 
This is the longest she's ever sat in my arms when I'm making a recording. Is he falling asleep as well? Maybe he must be comfortable. Maybe it's the rocking. It's the rocking. Is that nice? It's nice to rock. It's nice to feel so cool and so relaxed. Lenny, my little baby, relaxed and calm. Yeah, that's it. He's falling asleep. I think he is, you know. I can't really see his eyes probably as well as you can. I think he's fallen asleep. Oh, nice and sleepy. Andre used to do that, and I'd kind of just stroke him. It'd be on his belly, on his back. It'd fall asleep, and then it'd wake up and he'd look at me like, "What the hell are you doing? Get off me!" <laughs> and he'd jump off. Because he didn't like, he didn't know where he was. He just, he does that a bit as well. Christine says, uh, "Oh, no, you loved Logie, but he must be nice to, to." Oh, I can't see the rest of the message. Uh, to be a twosome again. Okay, yeah, it is. I mean, the problem with Logie. The only the only real problem, to be honest, everything else is positive, is to take him out for a walk. I needed to have a muzzle on him because he's not friendly with other dogs. Friendly with this one and super friendly with humans, like the friendliest dog you'll ever meet with humans. Um, you know, you could leave a, a, a freshly... A fresh born baby with Logie and know that the baby will be safe because that's that's his thing you know like he will protect um, especially kids and women didn't seem too <laughs> didn't too, seem too bothered about men but he had a real thing for women and children like he had a real protection a protecting kind of nature towards small children and uh, females don't know why the female thing rather than the male considering all his owners have been men um but the taking him out and getting the muzzle and then because there was such size differences between the two of them it was quite hard because one was really strong and there's him who He's, you know, he's little. He doesn't take up a lot of uh, energy to sort of a lot of s strength or anything. But Logie was big. Very, very strong dog. Strongest dog I've ever met other than Misty, the uh, St. Bernard, yeah, when I was a kid. And that was a strong dog. Um, Diana says, wish my dog could sit in my lap. He's way too big. By the way, I'm sweating, but I can't. I, if the sooner I take my hands off him, I know that he will be off. Guaranteed. As soon as I move anything. Oh, okay, maybe not. See, it just. That didn't happen, did it? I thought he'd be. He must be happy. He must be very relaxed. Maybe I'm just really boring. I was thought I was exciting, had an exciting voice, but maybe not. Uh, Diana says, wish my dog would sit on my lap, but he's way too big. Yeah. Um, Logie was like that. He, he didn't know he was so big. I had my dinner, and he just lay on my stomach like, no. No. I can't even have anyone laying on my stomach. I just, I need to, you know, it's just, I'm just eating. They'd look at me like, why are, you, why are you talking to me like I'm a human? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're saying. Just give me some food. Um, Crystal says, so this is your new pet after Andre. Well, he's not a pet, he's my little boy, he's my, he's my son. But um, 
yeah, he's I've had him since. I don't really think of him as new anymore. He's I've had him since December two thousand and twenty-two. Twenty, yeah. So I've had him about a year and three months. So he's not really. It feels like I've had him forever. Hello. Like, it seems like he's just been around for ages now, you know? Christina Donnell says he seems happy, though. Yeah. He is. I mean, we sleep together, but we're together. We're with each other most of the time. I mean, it's kind of silly, really, but it's most of the time we're with each other. When I go out, he goes out with me. When I go to bed, he'll come to bed with me. Unless he's busy, then he won't. You know, it depends. Um, he's he's a happy little monkey. Sometimes. Are you, you want to get down? Are you okay? You can get down if you want. Of course you can. See, that was good. I mean, we had him there for how long? William says, Jason. Hi, William. William. It's uh, it's weird to see so many names I've not seen for a while, like Christopher, uh, William, some names from uh, Rachel that I've not really, you know, that I haven't sort of seen about for a while. Um, I don't know how many of you are on my face group page, face group group, face page, fa Facebook group. That's what I was trying to get to. Um, Sebastian, he's a corgi. What him? He's uh, Jack Russell. Or you talking about your your one? Please accept my thank you. For... Christine says, please accept my thank you for getting through my making for for getting through my making my sleepless early nights. Uh, through my making my sleepless early hours. That's that's I'm I'm happy to help. Chris says, oh, well, sorry being out of the loop. Uh, we have spoken. It's Chris from South Carolina. Yeah, I know who you are. I just, um, it's, I guess, because I haven't done much of these live things, haven't I, for quite a while. There was a little period when I did a few of them regularly uh, a few years back. But um, this is, yeah, I haven't done any live. I did a live one a few months ago, I think. But it's not been a regular thing. And I can't really do a live Let Me Boy to Sleep because it's interacting. So it's not necessarily um, useful for that. But it's definitely a way to sort of say hello to people and sort of catch up. And, you know, people can get to know each other a little bit as well. William says, I've uh, been missing the lives. So I might not be in the group. Join the group. It's easy. Just um, if you want to, uh, it's called what's it called, everyone? If anyone's got a, a uh, what I do, if I just click on air and then add, I'm going to add a link. Add a link. Add a link. This is a link to the group. Yeah, this is a link to the group. I just added it there. So there's a link to the group. You can just uh, add yourself if you want. Getting through my, uh, yeah, getting through my analysis. That's why Chris said I was reading it, but he was like wrestling me at the same time. Jason Newland has just posted a link for the uh, Facebook group. Jason Newland boring group, yeah. So if anyone wants to join, there's only 149 members. But it's really just for people who are just, I don't know, it's, it's more for people that really, that really like what I do and, um, yeah, more of, it's, it's not just for the casual, it's for people that are kind of really like what I do, I guess. Uh, Christopher says, uh, I remember when you were in Cornwall doing a live stream. I remember that, blimey. That was 2000 and, oh, 2022, wasn't it? Or 2020, two, 2000 
and 21. 2021. Yeah, it was 2021 because literally Andre had passed away about a month before. And I went to Cornwall with a friend just to get away. She said, I'd all come with us. We go on a holiday. I said, okay. I was not good company at all. But I made a few recordings and I did do a live stream. I think I did it in with a background of like all the trees. It was it was really quite nice. Nice uh nice day. I remember that. Sebastian says uh it is more of a relaxation session than a bore you to sleep. However, it might just get me. Yes, Cornwall in Thailand, Vicky. Oh, I did a live one from Thailand, did I? I don't remember that. Blimey. Maybe I do. I think what it is, is... Um, like I know there's only 11 people watching in that. and Maybe it's an ego thing. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But it's kind of like, well... I do an ad hoc one. Because I know people listen to it or they watch it afterwards. So there's a few people who watch it. Um, but if I was to, <laughs> if I was to organise it and like give people a week's notice and only a few people watched, I'd feel like, oh, OK. You know, I don't know, it makes sense to you. Love hearing, Christine says, love hearing about your life growing up. Very interesting. Love your humour. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'd... I did think about doing the live Let Me Boy to Sleeps, but I would be continuously speaking to people on here, like people are making messages or leaving messages, because if you're leaving a comment, I don't want to ignore it. Do you know what I mean? You get me, innit? I swear down. Hey, Vinny, what are you doing? Oh, he's, he's playing with a ball. He found a ball in the hallway yes, this morning, yeah, today. And he's taken a real shine to it. And then it ended up outside again. He left it in the hallway. And then it ended up outside and he went and got it from outside. And this time he brought it in. And he's just been playing with it. So he's, it's like a little soft foam, foamy thing. And he likes it. Now he's laying on his back like he's sunbathing. It's the littlest things that make him happy I think he just you know he's I think he's happy I don't know I hope he is he seems to be he seems to be happy something that he has done lately is well today actually because normally he avoids all po pond, not ponds like puddles but because of the excess rain the park has been getting flooded, like the pathway and the grass has been flooded. So there's basically, I don't know, a few inches of water. It goes up to about his knees. And he was going in there and just pottering around in the water. It's like, oh, he normally doesn't like to get his feet wet. But for some reason he liked that. So I was chucking bits of food in for, for basically like for a duck, really. Not bread. <laughs> He's doing some weird things. He's a strange person. Christopher says, how are you doing with regards to your bipolar? I'm diagnosed with bipolar, started a new med, all good so far. Um, I'm, I don't know really. Uh, just... Uh, Christine says you're a very considerate person. Thank you for what you do. Thank you, Christine. Uh, bipolar, I don't know. I don't know, really. It's just a continuous thing, really. It's just... I don't know. But life is, life is difficult regardless, isn't it? It's, it's, very, it's a very complicated thing. Especially like grief and bereavement and all that stuff. It's just, uh, 
I think the aging process, I find it's, I'm not necessarily enjoying it as much as I thought I would. You know, I mean, I've got, a, this part of me feels grateful, you know, I'm 53. I got to 53. When I was in my 20s, I didn't believe I would. So, you know, I've got to an age, um, I don't think physically I'm too bad, you know, and I don't physically feel great at the moment. Broken toe, broken mouth. Um, but, mm, I mean, in some ways, the bipolar feels like a lifestyle in some ways. Yeah, Vicky, take one day at a time. Yeah, yeah, that's it, really. I agree. It's... I take medication. Uh, I know that I have to try to... Uh, what I know about myself is I have to avoid uh, stressful situations if I can. I know it's not always avoidable. But, you know, try to give myself space not to take on too much when it comes to other people's problems which I've I don't always listen to my own advice on that one uh, Chris says yeah it's a continuous thing it's tiring keeping up with the ups and downs yeah I suppose I've been dealing with this since I was a kid it's the the the, the mood swings and the mood disorder it's not a new thing um i've got itchy bum oh i felt nice it's not a maybe the extremes got worse as i got older but when i was a kid i was very very moody like just but without knowing without having a reason for it became very like wanted to be on my own or needed to be on my own couldn't stand being around people and then all I wanted to do was be around people and and this was at school like in junior school when I was sort of seven eight nine ten you know all the way through high school um I always felt there was something wrong with me but at the same time because I've always been like that I just like well this is how I am Maybe I'm just an alien, you know, waiting for the spaceship to come and collect me. Uh, Chris says, yeah, the anxiety can be bad. I try to avoid stressful situations. See, for me, I used to get, I never really knew what anxiety was. I did, but I didn't. Um, it wasn't really until I was, I used to get anxious and I used to get stressed. But I was able to manage it. I seemed to be, it didn't seem to affect me. I know it did, but you know, because I got ill physically when I was about 24 and they said stress. And I couldn't understand it. How can stress cause me to have such a physical illness for such a long time? 10 months of being ill. And they said it was stress because they couldn't find anything wrong with me physically. Put me on antidepressants. All the symptoms cleared up. It's like, what? Sebastian says, nope, still not bored. It's not a boring recording. This is me being interesting. Hey, you don't realise that my Let Me Boy to Sleep was just a joke title. And it was me being as interesting as I possibly could. And then realising that I really am boring. It's just, ah. Oh. Yeah, the only reason I started doing the Let Me Boy to Sleep was because somebody... So I used to do uh, Jason Chats vlogs years and years ago, like 2000 and I started doing the Jason, call them Jason Chats about 2010. So told you to know how far back that was. And someone said, you know, I listen to your Jason Chats and I just fall asleep listening. And they weren't supposed to be sleep recordings. And I thought, oh, okay, let's give that a go. And six years later, here we are. Not here, because this isn't a let me boy to sleep. This is... I don't know, just a chat, isn't it? Just a chat. I guess this is a Jason Chats. 
Um, anxiety, yeah. So going back to challenge, uh, Sebastian said I started listening in 2009. Yeah, wow. It's weird, isn't it? And you think about it, how long I've been doing this. Because, you know, when I do a recording, maybe someone's listening for the first time and I say, oh, I've been doing this since 2006. They probably think I'm lying. Like, how can I have been doing this for 18 years? Over 18 years. And, like, like making podcasts and videos and stuff like that. I mean, I was doing this before YouTube even kind of really became well known. And my videos were on MySpace to start with. Uh, Christopher says, yeah, 2009 for me too, before the ASMR boom. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of, I don't know what I was. I was just doing something. Just, yeah, I was around for quite a while. You know, I was only, I was only 36 years old. No. 35 years old when I started doing recordings, like audio and video. 35 years old. January 2006. And now I'm 53. Weird, isn't it? It's like, wow. And I do have thousands of recordings. Nothing to show for it, but I do have, I've got the recordings, I guess. Yeah. But anxiety, I didn't get any anxiety. Uh, I didn't, it didn't register the anxiety until I had my first full-blown panic attack. And that was in 2002, November. And that's when I'm like, oh, it's almost like something broke. And I couldn't ignore it anymore. And so, yeah, it was weird. You know, I got diagnosed with depression, recurrent depression, uh, anxiety, stress, so many different things around those kind of labels until eventually my doctor in 2011 said to me, she looked at my notes, she said, so you've been on medication since, on and off, since 1995. I said, yeah. And it's now 2011. I said, yeah. And this was like November 2011. So she said, uh, okay, well, here's some antidepressants. And she did, she'd given that. But then she said, um, I'm going to refer you to the mental health team to get or to a psychiatrist to evaluate you to see what's going on because she looked at my history asked me a few questions and stuff about my past family and all that stuff um, as well as my history and stuff that I've done as you know and sent me to psychiatric evaluation and that was in December and uh, yeah diagnosed with bipolar I was put on medication and didn't like it. So I basically just ignored the diagnosis. So this is the end of 2011. Not a good idea. I ignored it. I remembered it, but I kind of thought, no, I'll just carry on anyway. Because I was so short of money, I needed to work and I didn't know what to do. So I just thought, I've just got to keep going. I can't tell anyone that I've got bipolar because no one's going to give me a job. So I just kept it quiet. That's what I was thinking at the time. Got a job in a call centre in the December uh, 2012, I think it was. And by 2013, August, I was back on the antidepressants. Because uh, I was really, really went down. And, and then... Uh, yeah, it kind of got worse, worse from there. And that's when I went back to the psychiatrist and re-evaluated again and re-diagnosed again. This time uh, including uh, personality disorder. 
emotionally unstable personality disorder, which they didn't even tell me. My social worker told me later on that they put that in the notes, so they just didn't tell me for some reason. I thought that I would be the one that needed to know that. Hmm. So, yeah. Um, so I've been diagnosed with bipolar twice. Bipolar affective disorder. Twice by two different psychiatrists. Two different times. Um, and as far as, like, even if you just broke it down to a mood disorder, you go, yeah, I've got a mood disorder. Always have done. Have done since I was a little kid. Uh, you know, I can turn up at a funeral and be in a good mood, turn up at a wedding and be seriously depressed just in the day, just for a few hours. And not because anything bad's happening or anything's good's happening. I can feel elated for no reason or feel completely devastated for no reason. So when something really bad happens, sometimes it doesn't affect me the way that perhaps it should. Sometimes it affects me on a, maybe a, a larger level than perhaps it should. You know, so it's just weird. Um, Christmas, uh, Sebastian said, I used to get to sleep quickly before a night shift with those jasonnew.com videos. Oh, yep. Um, and Christopher says, yeah, call center work can cause even normal people to get mental health problems. Yeah, I think you're right. It's hard. Working in the call center, regardless of what your job is, if you're if you're dealing with phone calls from customers, whether you're in sales, whether you're in um, customer service, renewals, it doesn't matter what it is, IT, whatever. When you're dealing with other people, especially on the phone, so you've got no physical, you've got no visual cues of what's going on with the person. Um, it's a real challenge. I was good at it, but it was a challenge. And uh, when I was up, I was very successful. What's that say? When he was up, he was up. And when he was down, he was down. And when he was only halfway up, he was neither up nor down. That was uh, old King Winslow and his merry men or something. When he was up, he was up. And when he was down, he was down. So that was kind of a little bit like my moods. Yeah. And that's this, I think. Um, this has got to me a little bit, to be honest. Just a little bit. The last week or so, just... Uh. The day after I had it out, it was a Saturday, I was almost elated in the morning because it was gone. Like Saturday morning or Friday evening or whatever, you know, I was like, I sent a message to my friend who lent me money to, to pay for it, and because I didn't have any money to pay for it, so I was like, thank you so much for helping me, and I'll give you the money back, and two hundred and fifty pound, and I was just so grateful to have that thing out of my mouth, and it was almost like it wasn't hurting because I was felt so positive <laughs> uh, that might have been before the the thingy wore off you know until until I actually felt what it was really going to feel like for a couple of days uh, but compared to how it felt on Thursday it's nothing it's like yeah it's less than half, and it's not throbbing, it's just there, you know. The toothache I had was throbbing, and it was just like, oh. But the one that's left that was next to it, in fact, I'm thinking they might have took the wrong one out. It's very sensitive. If I do that, if I do that, it really seems to be sensitive. If I hit it with a hammer, it really plays up. So, I'm wondering if it's just the trauma of the gums and maybe the amount of pressure they were putting. They might have been leaning on it. I don't mean physically, like leaning with his elbow, but they might have been, like, to try and get the one tooth that was connected to the other tooth. 
and although it wasn't connected, it was next to it. And next, the other side of the tooth they took out was my gum, like the back of my mouth. There was no, no there was no gap because a wisdom tooth. So they probably put quite a lot of pressure on that one tooth, and there's nothing on the other side. There's a there's a gap there. Although it's like I don't want to call it, but it's not it's like like two teeth. It's not two teeth, one tooth, but it almost feels like two teeth together. Um, I know what I mean when I say that. Vicky, your gum will be very bruised. Yeah. It is, it is, um, you know, even the injection is going to bruise a gum, isn't it? Just the injection alone. That's going to be enough to, like, cause, I mean, you think if you get an injection, you get a blood test or anything like that, an injection in your arm, you get in, can end up with a bruise, can't you? Do you remember the GCB, BCG or whatever, I don't know what it's called, the jab that um, I got when I was about 14, in my shoulder, it was a right or left shoulder, and it was very painful, and it hurt for a few days afterwards, because I know everyone was punching each other in the shoulder. Uh, that's kind of what I imagine has gone in in my gum, is it was very painful, a very painful injection, and into a, a much more sensitive area than my than my shoulder. I mean, there's a lot of nerves in there, I know, but in the mouth, there's a lot more nerves, I'm guessing, into an area that's already, was already hurting. Right, I'm going to go because it's nearly time for me to go bed, bed, beddy boys. So this is a little bit longer than I thought we'd be. How long have I been on there for? Anyone? According to this, no way. An hour and 17 minutes. Wow. I can't believe I've been here for so long. Genuinely didn't think that. Uh, Sebastian says dental services are so expensive. 250 quite kind of makes it less painful. 250 could kind of makes it less painful. How does 250 make it less? This was 250 pound. That's a lot of money to me. Is that was um, it wasn't NHS. This was private, so um, I know some places would charge four hundred pound. So, but in a, in the UK, but two hundred and fifty. Trust me, paying two hundred fifty pound did not make it less painful. It's it didn't. Inc I mean, I would have paid if I had the money. I'd have paid. 2,500 if I'd had the money to get it gone because I just was needed to be done but um, oh, I needed to just start being a bit more gentler on my mouth because then I can begin to enjoy having that thing gone if you know what I mean Christian says hi Jason thank you thank you for helping me through the night Oh, it's my pleasure, Christine. Rachel says, nice to see you. Good night. See you, Rachel. And Christopher says, good night. So I'm going to go. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And thank you for watching, rather. Uh, thank you to everyone who will watch after I've recorded it and finished it. I'll just leave it on here. And um, that's it. I'm going to go now. My website's offline at the moment, but we'll be back on when I get paid next week. Um, other than that, thank you very much. Vicky says, thanks for your recordings, and we all look forward to next week, for the next one. Oh, thank you. Christine says, kisses. Thank you, Diana. Yes, and I better get on with my day. Okay, Diana. I forget, some of you are in other countries, aren't you? Where I am, it's quarter past nine p.m. Uh, Sebastian says, thanks for... Thanks, Jason. I hope you feel well. Better soon. Vicky, thank you. Vicky says good night. So good night to everybody. Everybody. And take care. And I'm going to go. So thanks to everyone. Thanks for all your, all your comments. And give it a couple of days. I will be back making more recordings. Just I need this. I don't think I'll be able to talk for an hour. 
like this, but talking to you and having your messages, it's kind of a distraction. Yeah. And I didn't have to think about what to talk about. You kind of gave me cues, as it were. So, see you later. Bye. Bye.